Hey friends, it's time for another Friday fun fact where I'll send you a neat little package of information you might not have known before. Yesterday was Melville Dewey's birthday, so let's talk about his most famous invention, the Dewey Decimal System. The Dewey Decimal System is how most public libraries organize their nonfiction sections. It's a numeric base 10 system that divides all knowledge into 10 groups with each group assigned 100 numbers. The 10 groups are as follows. 000 to 099, Computer Science, Information, and General Works. This is where the programming books are, as well as anything librarians need to do their job. 100 to 199 is Philosophy and Psychology. 200 to 299 is Religion. 300 to 399 is Social Sciences, which is huge. It goes all the way from Political Science to Folklore. 400 to 499 is Language. 500 to 599 is Natural Sciences and Mathematics. 600 to 699 is Applied Sciences and Technology, which goes from medicine to gardening to cooking. 700 to 799 is the arts and recreation, so you get painting and baseball. 800 to 899 is literature and rhetoric. And finally, 900 to 999 is history, biography, and geography. These sections are then subdivided again and again to provide more specific subjects. First, they're subdivided by tens, then further and further. Eventually, you add decimal points if you're getting really specific. So for example, and a little fun fact, Shakespeare is the only author with their own Dewey number, 822.33. This is how it breaks down. The 800s is literature and rhetoric. 82 is the literature topic number for English, meaning 820 is English lit. Within English lit, 822 is specifically English drama. 822.3 is English drama from the Elizabethan period, 1558 to 1625. And finally, 822.33 is Shakespeare's works. All of his plays, specifically. Sonnets are in 821.3, and any film versions are 791.4372, as they fall under art. So, if you're trying to figure out where a nonfiction book is in the library, figure out which overall group it's in, and then go from there. So let's talk pros and cons. On the pros side, First of all, it's old. We're on our 23rd version of this, and it's one of the two most common classification systems in the US, along with the Library of Congress system. Second, it's nearly universal through all public libraries, so it makes it easier for patrons to find things no matter where they are. Third, it's base 10. It breaks down things into groups of 10, which makes it pretty neat and easy to remember. And the way it breaks things down makes sense for the most part. As for cons, first of all, it's old. It was first published in 1876, meaning there are definitely some prejudices and biases baked in, especially since Melville Dewey didn't have the best track record. For example, most of the 200s is about Christianity. All other religions are relegated to 290 to 299. That's just illogical. Second, some topics are way bigger than the others, which can be frustrating for libraries, because if you want to display your entire section without putting books in storage, you might not have the ability to. You only have so much shelf space. And third, it's not immediately understandable. You have to learn it and remember it. Yes, it's organized, but it's not always evident. For example, cookbooks are under 641.5 under applied sciences, and folktales are 398.2 under social sciences. This can be hard for some people, especially kids. Now, for most libraries, these pros and cons balance out, especially since it's preferable to the Library of Congress system, which is used mostly in academic settings. Also, there is a little wiggle room. Libraries can deviate to some degree from the system. For example, some have done exceptional work diversifying their religious sections, but that's an enormous amount of time and energy, something that not all libraries have. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. My sources are in the description, along with a few extra links. If you'd like to check out Dewey's original text, you can read it through Project Gutenberg. And if you'd like to know a bit more about Dewey himself, there are a few links for that too. Friday Fun Facts will be on hiatus for the next two weeks, so I'll see you back here on January 1st where we'll talk about the calendar and why it's in the order that it is. Fun fact, it involves a pope, the Council of Nicaea, and Julius Caesar. Like and subscribe for more Friday Fun Facts and I'll see you in 2021.